In this video, we'll show you how to spend a few hours in the city of Bologna as we make our way down to Florence. We just got on our Flix bus at the Mestre bus stop. It'll be about two hours before we get there. We've arrived here in Bologna. We've got ourselves a nice itinerary, at least several stops planned, but that's considering that we do have a backpack each and a duffel bag. So considering that, not going anywhere extremely far and everything we plan on going to is within walking distance. So let's get started. Our first stop here in Bologna is Piazza e Agosto, which is of Roman origins, but got its name when the Bolognese people won it over in a battle with the Austrians. Now on Fridays and Saturdays, it's quite lively. Today's Thursday, unfortunately, but there's a La Piazzola market. And then adjacent to the square, there is a Parco de Montagnola, which is a nice elevated park uh, that people hang out in during the day. Here we are at the Fontana del Neptune, or the Fountain of Neptune, which is made of marble and bronze. It was created in 1563 to 1566, and it was meant to represent the Pope, the same way that Neptune rules over the seas, the Pope rules over the world. And at the bottom of the statue, you can actually see four angels that are supposed to represent the four rivers known at the time, the Danube, the Nile, the Amazon, and the Ganges. Here I stand at Piazza Maggiore, a lively square known as the heart of the city of Bologna that has many important buildings that I won't even begin to name. It's extremely close to the Neptune Fountain, but this square was actually constructed in 1200 when the municipality began collecting horses and land and they wanted to create an area where they could also conduct trade and other activities. But it wasn't until the 16th century when this place became known as Piazza Maggiore. As we leave Piazza Maggiore, I'm gonna head through these arches right here. That's gonna take us to a part of Bologna city center known as Quadrilatero. It's a narrow alleys that are home to people who specialize in different handicrafts. And some of them have been here for many generations and this started since the medieval ages. And we'll also see a combination of older architecture mixed with more modern architecture. Off of these streets in the Quadratero is the Santa Maria de la Vita Church, which is a late Baroque style Roman Catholic church. And it also houses an adjacent oratory from the main one called the Oratorio del Batuti. So we're gonna go check out the inside and see what it looks like. We're here at a very important landmark here in Bologna, which is the two towers of Bologna on my left. 97 meters tall, 498 internal steps is the Torre Degli Asinelli. It's the one of the two towers that is accessible to the public for a small fee. And then on my right is the Torre Garisineta, which is a little bit shorter at 47 meters tall. That one you can see is leaning a little bit. So I think around the 14th century or so, they actually had to lower it. The two big towers, I know everybody is familiar with the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy. There's two towers here in Bologna that is super important to the city. That does it for our day here in Bologna. As you can tell, we're back at the bus station and it looks like our bus is actually around an hour delayed. So we'll see what time it actually comes and then what time we get to Florence. So stay tuned for that in our next video. But I think we did a good job showcasing some of the things you could do if you only have one day, or frankly, we only had a few hours here in Bologna that you can do for free, that you can walk to pretty quickly. So I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.